So, uh, I guess, and it's very tragic when you have lost a child or you have a child that's severely injured from your own gun. And then it's tough to turn around and, although lawful, to, to, to prosecute mom and dad. You know, you, you, you do have to hold them accountable. It's like they've lost a child, and now they've got to go to jail. Education is key. Chief, you, um, back to the homicides, what does, if anything, the Houston Police Department do starting today, for instance, to combat this um, and also to uh, address the perception among Houstonians that uh, crime is an issue, particularly homicides? Well, first of all, you need to remind them, overall, this city is 12% safer the first two months of this year than last year. That's a fact. Now, that is a fact. So let me say that again. Part one crime in the city of Houston is 12% lower the first two months of 2015 than they were in 2014. So I don't want to diminish or degrade the hard work that the men and women are doing out there. Homicides are problematic because there's no trends. There's no serial killer that's accounting for these. It's money and passion. And that passion can be individual conflicts and arguments in your bedroom. And this is why we take a zero tolerance when it comes to domestic violence. If, if we receive a call to someone's home or apartment and there is evidence of domestic violence, we're going to arrest you because we know that it can lead to homicides. If we interdict gang members who are carrying guns unlawfully, we're going to arrest you. And in many times, we're going to arrest you and charge you under the federal system, especially if you are a convicted felon. So we can keep you off the streets and keep you in, in penitentiary much longer. And of course, robberies are, are truly stranger on stranger crimes. And those are ones that we take every robbery serious because they have the potential for violence. So there's a lot of things that we're doing to try to address <clears throat> uh, and be proactively intervening into situations that don't lead to murder. But still, if you've got a gun in your home, there's always a potential for violence, whether you use it on someone or someone uses it on you. But I would say to most Houstonians, if you're not involved in drugs, in a personal violence, and you're not engaged in a high-risk lifestyle, you know, doing high-risk times of the morning or night, murders are rare. Ask you, Chief. There was a woman who appeared in. Go ahead. Okay. A woman who appeared in court today. She was arrested by Houston police a little while back. Uh, caught on camera, essentially abusing her uh, two children. Uh, wondering if, by chance, you've got a reaction uh, to this particular situation, or just any message to parents about how they handle their children. Well, I don't know uh, the details of that specific case uh, that you're referring to. But my advice to any parent. Obviously, the state of Texas allows parents to use corporal punishment. But there's a difference between taking corrective action, using corporal punishment, and child abuse. Child abuse is illegal. And a parent should always, always be cautious in the form of corrective action or punishment that you're going to use 
with a child, especially a young child. Because sometimes it can be a fine line between your ability to use corporal punishment on your own child, and that's a slippery slope to, to child abuse. Chief, one, one question about the the pen handlers, and then also the safety for the motorists. What have you guys been taking uh, measures about this problem that we see in every time they've been crisscrossing in front of cars and then also in the, in, uh, in the traffic? Well, we do take action, and the action that, that we take in regards to pen handling can come into many different forms. One, for the last few weeks, especially during the rodeo, and it will be no different from this weekend, uh, doing the, uh, the regional games that we have for the NCAA uh, around Energy Park. We try to solve the problem, not just look at it from trying to get them off the corner of the street today. Our hot team has been uh, involved with going out trying to make sure that the folks that are out here panhandling, that if we can convince them to go with us and to try to seek help from other social services and get them long-term uh, help and care, it, it's better off because if you give someone who is uh, panhandling because they're hungry, if you give them a dollar today, what are you going to give them tomorrow? And, and we have to be educated as, as folks that, that are giving money. You're better off giving to charitable uh, social services that help the homeless, that can give them long-term help and long-term care. And it's hard when someone is begging and you have money in your pocket, you've been blessed, you have a job, you have a home. It's, it's difficult. So sometimes people want to stop. So the people that are donating money sometimes causes a problem. Causes traffic problems. Traffic will back up through the intersections. Sometimes it can cause rear end collisions. But a person do have the right to stand on the corner, the curb, and even the median. Now it is illegal to walk into the roadway. But the officer must observe it too. 